Right, good evening. At this time, I want to call to order a special called meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on Monday, March the 14th, 2022 at 6 o'clock p.m. here at the Franklin County Justice Center in Carnesville, Georgia. We know for the record that we have all five commissioners present for this meeting tonight. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us. At this time, Commissioner Swells is going to give an invocation, and we ask that you remain standing and join us in the Pledge of the Flags. Please stand. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, we, we come to you right now, um, and we lift up our world. Um, there's just so much uncertainty right now. There's um, so much going on, not just locally, but um, across the ocean, and um, people are making very big decisions right now in our life. And we lift up um, our world leaders. Um, we lift up... Um, you know, these people that are making these tough decisions, and we pray that your wisdom uh, would guide them and that, you know, you would change hearts that need to be changed. You would open minds that need to be open. And we give uh, you the glory for being all-powerful and capable of doing these things. For um, the situations that we're dealing with here locally, I pray that you help this Board of Commissioners make wise decisions. And help us to do what your will is truly and fully. We thank you, Lord. In name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda for tonight's special call meeting is the approval of the agenda. So, commissioners, at this time, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as presented, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Westers made the motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as presented signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the agenda is approved as presented. The next item on the agenda is the item for discussion 4A subdivisions. At our March 7, 2022 regular meeting, which was last week, uh, the board discussed the importance of managing housing growth in the county, and after a lengthy discussion, we developed a plan. Uh, some of this we'd already been working on, but the first part is impact fees. The board directed our staff to develop and present a list of impact fees for subdivisions, and Mr. DeLozier has been working on that for some time. The impact fees are paid by developers, and they help offset uh, the impact of a development on public services and public safety. This list is going to be presented at our March 29th, 2022 work session, and once the board gives the go-ahead, uh, that list has to be submitted to the state and approved before we can approve it locally. And that whole process may take a few months to complete. Uh, the second part is a zoning text amendment, and the board directed staff to prepare a zoning text amendment to introduce at our regular April meeting. Uh, this uh, zoning text amendment will effectively double the required minimum lot size for major subdivisions from one acres, which is the current minimum, to two. And that the size can actually vary slightly above or below one acres or with a change two acres, depending on whether or not uh, water and sewer are available. But more or less, the average minimum lot size right now is one acre, and this proposed amendment would double it to two. Uh, a major subdivision is any subdivision that has six or more houses, and that's what we would uh, propose that that apply to. A zoning text amendment has to go before planning and zoning for a public hearing, and then it has to come to us for a public hearing, and that takes some time. Uh, but our staff indicated this process could be completed in about two to three months. It's also important to note that for the last year or more, the staff have been working on revising the entire zoning ordinance. Franklin County adopted uh, zoning in back in 2005. Uh, and there haven't been a whole lot of changes in that in that since that time, so it's time to do a whole update. But you have to get that right. That involves a lot of moving parts. It's very complicated, uh, and we've been working on that for over a year. It's possible that won't be completed until sometime this summer, but it will incorporate any changes that we make. 
Tonight, we want to consider a proposed 90-day moratorium on single and multifamily subdivisions so the county has time to complete uh, the process for reviewing and implementing the impact fees, complete uh, the zoning change that would double the minimum lot sizes, and any other changes that we feel are appropriate. So, commissioners, you have the proposed resolution before you, which I hereby introduce into the record in its entirety. Uh, at this time, is there a motion to adopt the resolution establishing a 90-day moratorium on single and multifamily subdivisions? I'll make a motion that we uh, adopt a 90-day moratorium on single and multifamily uh, subdivisions. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Swales has made a motion to adopt the resolution establishing a 90-day moratorium on single and multifamily subdivisions. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Wester seconded the motion. Uh, so we'll open it up for discussion. Uh, Mr. Swales, since you made the motion, we'll start with you. I think it's um, a starting point. I think it allows us to uh, get as much information as possible um, so that we can hopefully make a, a good decision with that information. Um, there's a lot of considerations. I know Scott and staff are working really hard to uh, provide uh, impact fee updates and kind of bring that all together as well as uh, what increasing the acreage will do uh, for growth. Um, uh, so I think it's appropriate to uh, go ahead and do 90 days. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wester. Could we do 180 days? I mean, give them more time. They got Commissioners, I'll open it up. One concern that was expressed is uh, you know, if we want a moratorium, we don't want to make it, make it too long to uh, affect local construction companies uh, and affect housing overall. We want housing. We just want to be able to manage it. So I'll open that up to you guys. Well, Commissioner Wester, you were going to comment on that, so we start with you. Uh, I guess I'll comment on the 180-day first. I mean, I'm fine with starting out with a 90-day and, and leaving an open end to it to where if we need to move it to... 180 days, then then we would be able to do that once we, you know, if we see that we're not going to get things done in time. Yeah, and it is written so that uh, we can extend it. it. The more the way the the resolution is written is that it lasts for 90 days, or until we complete the impact fees and the revision and any other steps we decide to take. But it also says we we can also extend it, and we have to have a public hearing if we decide to extend it longer than 90 days. But that is an option. What I was thinking. We need to be working with the school system. Yeah. See what their thoughts are. Is the reason I was thinking 180. Yeah. yeah. You know, we we need we really need to work with the school system. Okay, Commissioner Foster. Um. Yeah, I think we need to give our staff time and give time to go through the legal process uh, to get all this right, so we get it right going forward. And I, I, I'd be good with you know leaving it open ended where we could extend it. Okay. If we need to when we get in there. All right. Well, we have a motion in a second for the 90-day. Are you good with that as long as we can extend it if we need yeah. to? But, you know, we're going to need some time to talk with some people. Yeah. Because there's people out there that's not too excited about what's fixing to take place. Yeah. You know, we need to be talking to somebody. We're all right here. <laughs> all right. Any other discussion? I mean, one thing I do want to say is, one thing I preach to my kids, and, and I mean, I think I hold myself accountable to it too, is is that we got to realize there's consequences for our actions. And even though our actions may only go as far as here as a vote, the consequences down the road, when you think of the school board uh, and what they're going to face if we have a, a fast influx of, of these subdivisions come in and they all come together at one time. And you've got all these kids sitting there. I mean, I know firsthand what Cornsville Elementary looks like because my wife's there every day, and they're full. And I, I would, I would say that the other two schools are full too. Okay. And if, if you know, we we can pass this vote real easy and let all these subdivisions come in, but what are we going to do to the taxpayers in this county because of a decision we make? We need to stop and think about that. And we need to work hand in hand with other entities to make sure that even though it might look good for us, how's it going to affect them down the road? So, I mean, that's that's just my thoughts. Uh, I think there's other things we're not ready for. Uh, our fire departments, I don't know if we're ready for that big of an influx of people. Our EMS, I don't know if it's ready. 
I mean, the sheriff's department, he's going to have to make a, a lot of changes and everything. So I, mean, I just I just think there's a lot of things we've got to get prepared for. I mean, I think we've done a good job up to this point in getting prepared for certain things. But I just think there's still some things we're not, we're not quite there yet. Any other? I agree with Commissioner Wester. I think there's, there's, our decisions affect more people than just this board. So I think we need to think about that. Mr. Turner, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, I, I believe that Mr. Delosier, if he has anything. No. Okay. All right. Any other, any other comments? Okay. Hearing no more comments, all in favor of the motion to adopt the resolution that establishes a 90 day moratorium on single and multifamily subdivisions signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, oh, I'm sorry. All opposed, same sign. Are you, are you opposed? No. I'm, I'm sorry. No, sir. Oh, you're voting no? I'm voting yes. Oh, okay, okay. I no. want to be sure. I thought so. All right. So, you know, since you, you know, if you said you can stand it, you know, I don't have a problem with it. But whenever you get, you can't stand it, then they're going to be a problem. Okay. All right. So the motion will carry four to zero and the resolution establishing a 90 day moratorium on single and multifamily subdivisions is adopted. So let the record reflect that a copy of this adopted resolution will be attached to the official minutes of tonight's meeting. And it will also be made available for public inspection after the meeting tonight. Mr. I think it is important to state that any applications that have been received prior to tonight are still. Right. That's a good point. This, this, uh, in, this moratorium goes into effect tonight as we adopt it. Any applications that have been started at any form as of today are not affected by this moratorium and, and have to continue. Anything that uh, occurs after this point or anybody who attempts to make an application won't be able to until the moratorium is over. So anything that's already in progress is unaffected by what we, the moratorium we passed tonight. And that is an important point to, to make clear. All right, the next item on the agenda are announcements. Mr. Turner, do you have anything? Uh, no, just no. Okay. I just want to say thank you to all of our public works employees and our volunteers who helped with the dump day that we had. This was our second free dump day last Saturday. We had a huge turnout and we wound up running out of space uh, and we had to turn people away. For anyone who had to be turned away, I apologize. We are working on a makeup day for that. Uh, but we are especially thankful for the members of the public who were understanding and took it in stride when they were turned away. We understand people were disappointed and know people loaded trailers and got there later and were turned away. And we apologize for that, but we are going to try to have another makeup day so that everyone can take advantage of that. Uh, and as soon as we have a date, we'll announce that and make that public. Uh, and just a reminder, the board will meet next for a work session on Tuesday, March the 29th at 6 p.m. here at the Justice Center. Commissioner Wester, do you have anything? Uh, just echoing what you said. Thank you to all the public works and everybody that worked Saturday. Uh, I don't think any of us expected the turnout that we got, and, and we do apologize for those that got turned away. Uh, one thing we have to realize, too, is that is no longer a, a actual working landfill anymore either. Uh, we had to bring uh, trash containers in, and, and those trash containers had to be taken to Banks County to be unloaded. So it's, it's not a working landfill anymore so it wasn't like we could just take the trash there and dump it so but thank you for understanding yeah and it was it was extremely cold wednesday saturday so we appreciate the employees who were out there and also volunteers we had a lot of volunteers working too commissioner swales yeah i, I agree um i was a little bit sad because i needed to dump a lot of stuff too um so maybe i can get it the next time around but um I think it's something that uh, I'm glad that we started. We recognize that there was an issue in our county where um, it's just it's tough for people to dump, you know, a lot of their garbage and it's expensive sometimes. So it's something that we want to continue. And it's something that I think maybe we should look into um, modifying a little bit, maybe considering a voucher system or something where people have uh, an individual time window where they can do it and not necessarily feel like they're competing with the whole county. Um, but that being said, uh, we have the best staff, we have the best employees, and there were some volunteers out there working really hard, too. And so I'm grateful for all of them. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster? Just echo what you guys said. Thanks to the Public Works Department. I had a trailer at my house, too, that I didn't get to take. So. Okay. Commissioner Franklin? I, I got to get my load there. I was there at 8 o'clock. <laughs> it was two lanes out. <laughs> and, you know, I appreciate them, uh, 
working out in you know, working the volunteers. We've got a good staff. Okay. Got anything else? All right. The next item is to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Wester. Is there a second? No second. Thank you, Commissioner Foster. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion will carry forward to zero, and we stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight.